code is back. Hold on, what's code? It is that round, it is that egg shaped ball that bounces funny, mate, that makes men go all weird, that afterwards you drink beer and you do silly things. Before you drink beer, during you drink beer, and it's magnificent, and we've been waiting long enough. There's been nothing on, nothing on TV, apart from that silly cricket game that we didn't like here in Australia anymore. Um, rugby, mate. Tonight, Brumbies, Waratahs. Tomorrow night, the Reds take on the Hurricanes. Unbelievable. We're playing a New Zealand team too early in the season, for my liking. But anyway, that's the way it goes. Your Reds against my Canes. Why is it in Townsville, of all places? Why don't they play it in the Solomon Islands then? I mean, come on. You've never been to Brownsville? Longsville, they sometimes call it. Okay. Because we're trying to take the game to the regions. Because we're trying to uh, invade rugby league's turf by taking, if they haven't got any footy going there at the moment, take it up there. Mate, there'll be a big crowd up there. There's, I keep telling you, there's rugby people around. It's just that they haven't had much to be interested in and there's lots of Kiwis live up there. So the, it will be. You'll, you'll look at the screen and you go, you're telling me that's a 1,000 kilometres north of Brisbane and there's that many people in the stadium. They, they, people love rugby. Um, especially in this, this part of the season because the Reds haven't lost a game yet. So we're on we're equal top of the table. It offers hope, you know that. A thousand K. See, that's like the, the whole, that's more than the whole of the North Island. It's just bizarre to think about. It's, it's not up the road. I mean, it's not like saying, OK, yeah, we're going down to Hammy to watch the Chiefs play. I mean, this is a bloody more than a day trip, isn't it? Well, that's the point we're trying to say because Queensland is a mighty big place. So we're trying to say we're all of Queensland. Otherwise, the Reds play every bloody game in Brisbane at Suncorp Stadium. So the Reds are actually, I reckon they've done the right thing. We sent one of our listeners from a radio show up there. How would you like to do this one? It would go flying up on a chartered flight with about 100 other people. Um, what, what was it? Three hours lunch before the game, then the game, then a uh, post-match function, then get back on the plane and fly home. So you're actually home on the same day. If you say to your wife, I'm just going to footy, and you'll get home from Brisbane on the, on the same day yeah. in a different condition to what yeah. you left. Never seen. But sensational. What a fantastic... That's what rugby's all about. I saw a great T-shirt the other day before we move on. You'll love it. And it said, weather forecast. It said, rugby with a chance of beer. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Mate, Mate, it's all over in 90 minutes, 80 minutes plus half time. It's all over. But rugby, a rugby game, you try to explain it. The league is in my life. They go, what is it? What's, why do people like rugby? I said, listen, you idiots, you catch a train to the game, you get there 10 minutes before a game of league start, you watch the game and then you go straight home or you just watch it at home. Rugby people think it's a 12-hour episode of their life. They deal with it properly. They make it a, a proper event. So that's the difference. And they go, oh, that's interesting. Okay, I might try it sometime. Greg Martin is with us, Triple M out of Brisbane, a man's radio show, and you had Steve-O from Jackass in the studio. This... Mate, I've, I've, I've watched this guy just do some of the most insane things ever. And, and he does them with a smile, a goof smile on his face. And, like, he just doesn't seem to feel pain. He's still doing it. I don't know how much I can talk about what he does. Oh, no, don't talk. Well. No, that whole, that whole thing he does with the penis and that, mate, I, don't, I just don't understand any of that. What about the day he stapled his testicles to his leg? Yeah. Um, but not that. He, he's, he's, got a stu- he's now a stand-up, but he, a stand-up comedian. Travels around doing his own stuff, but oh god, mate! You check his videos. He's got one where he's pleasuring himself while skydiving. Um, oh, I, I know. That's I don't. That's... Anyway, but we got our listeners to ring up and go, "How are you injured as a young man impersonating Jackass?" The full board, of course. There were people with broken legs because they were towing each other around in Portaloos at eighty k's an hour. <laughs> Ah, uh, there were people rolling cars. Uh, <laughs> and I said to the bloke in the portal is with the broken, one bloke broke his leg, one broke, bloke broke his arm inside the portal. I said, what did mum and dad say? They were watching. Oh, okay. uh, oh. <laughs> right. Okay. But they are, the most pop- they are some of the most popular entertainers in the world. So we've missed our mark, clearly. We're not uh, outstanding enough at hurting ourselves. Back to the rugby. You've got a new coach. He's got yes. rid of everyone to do with Dave Rennie. He's, he's every single person that guy. He, he's he's making noise. He's making yep. headlines. He's getting people on side. All of a sudden, he's popular. We're still sitting here a week later, mate. Still not knowing who's going to be the All Black coach at the end of the Rugby World Cup. Whether the All Black coach right now is going to be the All Black coach going to the World Cup. The New Zealand Rugby Board had a meeting yesterday. And hear that sound? Yeah, how'd they go? 
Well, that sound is the statement that's come out. Nothing. I didn't hear it. Nothing, Greg. Nothing. nothing. Zero. I mean, these people... These, what do you want? These clouds... Well, what we want is we just want it over with, mate. Either pick the guy, don't pick the guy, or pick that guy. Just get it done. But don't you just need to worry about the World Cup this year? Just let's let's worry... Is that what they're saying? Do they say, just hold on? They're not saying anything. They're actually pretending go. none of this is going on, mate. They actually front press conferences and say, there's nothing to say, there's nothing to... We, we, don't, we don't know what you're talking about. We don't know what you're talking about. It's what everyone's talking about in New Zealand. I can't believe you. I know you are getting excited about it, but on the other hand, it is the biggest story in New Zealand rugby, and they're not saying anything. Not, not a word. Not a word, mate. Not an absolute word. Honestly, these people would never run their own companies like this. You know, yet they run New Zealand rugby like this. It just you sit there and you scratch your head and just go, "Can somebody please? How do you expect?" You know, all of, you know the the players to be on the same page, the country to be on the same page. If 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 you won't even turn the page, if you know what I mean. Let's talk league though. See, this year, this I I I got baited by a Daily Telegraph article during the week, which described the Warriors as the number seventeen side to watch this year, the worst side, the worst entertainment. I thought that's a bit bloody harsh, isn't it? Oh, what? I know. I thought it was too. We we've got the most. The Dolphins will come last, surely. That's mm-hmm. our team yeah. here in Brizzy, the second team. Well, poor Warriors, they haven't been home for a couple of years. They've actually got a bit of stability to them. I reckon they might go all right. And, mm. and you've got to go to Mount Smart and Mount Smart Stadium and play. I, I reckon the Warriors will make the eight. Mount Smart Stadium. Maybe not. Mount Smart. I mean, okay. Pick, what's the worst stadium in Australia that you've been to? Somewhere where you just think, my God, am I living in a panel beater shop? What the hell is this? Is, oh, there's the rugby post. Where's the worst stadium? No, we don't have any bad stadiums. Every capital city, oh, some of the little regional towns, home ground and away showers. Newcastle's pretty ordinary, but they're all pretty good here. But your places are still from the 1950s. Mm-hmm. God, I played at Athletic. Is it Athletic Park there in Wellington when beautiful, it was the old Athletic Park? Mate. We thought it was a good idea to build timber grandstands. Anyway, <laughs> um, that was amongst the worst. The dressing rooms there were the most festering things. It was like a caravan park yeah. after uh, after Christmas. The ablutions are blocked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, don't tell me about We haven't got any bad stadiums. You've got them all. Okay. All right. The Welsh players, well, they managed to avert strike action against England. So, yeah. I mean, this is... I look at rugby administration all around the world, mate, and I think you've got this beautiful game, this beautiful product. You, you, you generate hundreds of millions of dollars. And yet the people that run it, what, what do they just go to the dickhead basket and just pick the first five that are sitting on the top, do they? Are you asking a bloke who played his whole career as an amateur and used to look into the grandstands and go, 60,000 people here, where's all that money going? Yeah. Are you asking me to comment on people striking because they want more money and they want more guarantees? We had no guarantees, but by Christ, we had some fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Where I did all no the money go, Greg? Where did striking? all the money go? I mean, when you think... I don't know. You think about all those tickets get sold for... Where did the money go? We were sponsored. Like, we had sponsorships like they have now. It must be the... Maybe we didn't have big TV deals like they had now, but where did all that money go from those spectators? Well, unless we... Oh, God, God forbid. Did it go to grassroots footy (laughs) rather than the players? I don't think so, no. I don't know. No, I'm not sure. Let's talk some test cricket before we finish up, though. And texting you last weekend, I mean, I had to turn off watching the Black Caps. We were just losing. And then I turned over and I just... (laughs) (laughs) I love the text when you said to me, I think you said to me early on day, oh, late on day two, early on day three, you said, you guys guys might win this. Um, One of the least prophetic text messages I've received for some time when we folded, did we lose eight for 29? Oh, God. Can we stop sweeping, for God's sake? We're terrible. Next, what is the, next up, we've got the Poms. What does the Australian public think of this test team capitulating like it like it has been? Okay, so you know Pat Cummins, our mighty warrior, the number one, or he was until James Anderson took over, the number one fast bowler in the world, our captain, who rallies against climate change yep, yep. and then... Uh, yeah, catches it, the first class on flight. The no, no, he like, actually rides his bike across the Nullarbor to Perth, doesn't he? That's right. I think he's subtle. He's home from India. He came home. They're all come home. About eight of them come home for the little nine day break in between test matches. And then I thought, God, this is going to be good. Dave Warner came home. And I thought, this in the airport, there was press room. Oh, my God, this is going to be tremendous. This old boy's going to retire. No. Nah. I'm fighting on. And Australia just went, Oh, come on, mate. Knock it on the head. You know, those. 
You know those players that everybody knows it's time to finish up, but Dave Warner just won't. He just won't give up. Oh, yeah, you know, I've got to be a bit more in me. No, you haven't, mate. You're, 30, you're nearly 37. Stop it. All right, mate. Can tell you it's raining here today, and which means there's probably going to be more flooding on the East Coast. So that means that um, this oh. team of 5 million that got together, of course, to fight COVID, they, we've lost a few of them. They've now got guns, and they rob you of generators. They're standing outside ATM machines if you get some cash out because there's no internet. What? No. Yeah, so this is the east coast of the North Island. This is yeah. that's what's going on. Yeah, Hawks Bank. No, the Prime Minister though is, is completely in denial about oh no, no, nothing none of that's happening. And every second phone call to talk back is saying, Well look, you know, I was out at the dairy getting yeah. a loaf of bread and there's two guys in a car saying, Give it here. I mean this is this is feral New Zealand at its absolute worst, mate. Wow. Well, we haven't heard anything about that here in Australia. Like you know, the earthquake in Christchurch in two thousand eleven was huge news. This for some reason, why this hasn't grabbed the same headlines? I don't know if the earthquake over in Syria and Turkey has taken the attention or or what, but we we don't we haven't latched onto this like okay. uh, we did other things that have happened in New Zealand. It's really weird. Well, because that's because you have floods. Have you as asked well, for help? No, you have floods. I mean, so that's why. I mean, we have floods. You have floods. I mean, you don't really have earthquakes. How's the weekend, mate? Oh, where, where are you yeah, going to watch yeah. the footy? Tell us that though. Are you back to the island, or are you going to be watching it at home? Or are you? I'm at the island right now, I'm sorry to tell you. I came over and did the show here this morning, and uh, it's always good to have a breakfast radio show with kookaburras on it. But uh, anyway, so rugby tonight, mate. Yeah, will be ready at uh, 6.30 our time to watch our boys beat your boys. We should have a bet, you and I, on uh, who's going to win that. Have, are you guys any good? I haven't seen any of your trial form. No, we're terrible, mate. You'll beat us. Yes, so let's um, double whatever the odds were. All right, listen, keep an eye out for number 10 for the Reds. Michael Liner, one of my groomsmen on my wedding, one of my best mates. His son's playing 5-8 for the Reds tonight. Little Tom, Tom Liner, born in Italy, grew up in England, came home because he said, I always wanted to play for the Reds. I don't know where he got that from, but he's lining up in 10. So there's a, uh, an interest point in that game.